and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it. No set schedule, blah, 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 all of that. Joining me today to talk about today's book is Juliana. Say hello. Hello, everyone. And what is the book today? Go for it. The book today is Prominence by Anne Leckie, published in, uh, on September 26th. 2017. Yeah, Kindle, oh, that was very smooth. Wasn't yeah, it? very smooth. <laughs> Kindle edition, 488 pages. So this is a pretty recent book, and it was recommended by a few people. And I read uh, Anne Leckie's previous books, which was the Ancillary Justice, Ancillary um, Mercy, and Ancillary Sword. No, I think it's Ancillary Sword, then Ancillary Mercy. Yes. So the Ancillary Justice system, the Imperial Radish uh, series. I'm not sure it's Radish, but let's no. say Radish because I quite like the word. So it's the Radish Imperial uh, series. And it won all the Hugos and, and the Nebulas and the Arthur C. Clarke Awards and, for the first um, book. We quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I really we? enjoyed it. Yeah. It was one of those books where, you know, you read the first one and you're like, wow, this is going to be hard to follow up. And the second book didn't really pay off. But then the third book kind of got back to where the first book was again. And yeah. it's like, okay, that that paid off. I quite I enjoyed, have enjoyed the first one a lot. Yes. I, yes, the, certainly the first book is the one that kind of captured the imagination. The yes. You know, you're spending time inside the brain of a spaceship who is then inside humans, but then like the and then it, by itself, and then just a human by itself. The, uh... And I really like the flashbacks back to the time when the spaceship was a full spaceship. You know, really interesting science fictional problems in a world which was kind of well realized as well. I love the little um, social things that were going on beside the um, beside the main story. For example. Um, the, as a spaceship, she would sing, but because she, uh, I say she, I'm not sure if it's a he or a she, but the, the usage in that book, because she would um, uh, sing, but she could control lots of different people at the same time with the ancillaries, they would all sing together because she was controlling all of them. So she'd be like, okay, everyone sing this, and there'd be harmonies, and it would always be singing. So it's like these l nice little colors, coloring details in the back of the background of this story, which added texture, added, added flavor. And there's lots of those little things all the way through that first series, you know, like the tea drinking and the, you know, different pronoun use and all those other kind of interesting quirks that made the overall story of double crossing um, ancillaries and sort of like people, like people with their personalities spread out across many bodies and sort of like them rebelling against each other, or uh, rebelling against themselves. I don't even know how it works. Anyway, but there's a lot of that stuff going on. Really fun science fictional storytelling, like science fiction ideas with fun storytelling and interesting characters yeah. and stuff like that. And it was very well thought through. Like yes. it, it wasn't just, oh, we have a, a universe of things uh, and this is it. No, it was like, she thought further than that, yes. and we just got what fit to that story. What fit right? to that story. However, some of the storytelling is, I did find a bit weak. For example, in the end of the first book, the plan was, oh, I want to kill this person, so what am I going to do? Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I've got this gun, and I'm just going to go in there and see what happens. And uh, which was kind of a bit of a weakness for me at the end of that, at the end of that first story. And I always found it funny with the, the feedback because people going, oh, it was a bit slow at the start, where all these flashbacks happen and stuff. But then it really picks up towards the end, and I was like, oh, the first two thirds of that first book I really enjoyed and then it kind of felt kind of started falling a bit flat at the end anyway all that to say Anne Leckie does have some good stories in her and some good storytelling and some interesting science fictional ideas uh, which brings us to provenance which I thought was almost complete garbage um, I wouldn't say from beginning to end because there was some there was a section in the middle which I thought was quite fun but, like, uh, spoilers for this review, I mean, not spoiling the book, but spoilers, I really didn't like this book. I found it so unsatisfying and so pathetic on almost every level that I don't, it's not even worth ranting about. Maybe there will be a rant later, but I, yeah, it just, will be. it's such a disappointment to know that someone can write a book which wins the Hugo, the Nebula, the Arthur C. Clarke Awards, the Locus Award, all the awards that first book won. And then a mere three books later, she's like, cashing in on the good feelings that she's had on a previous series with just a pathetic story. It's There's nothing here. Anyway, okay. tell me let's what you just, think. Let's just say, first of all, it is set in that same universe, right? Mm. So it's the same kind of... Uh, uh, how do you call them? Sections of politics? No, those yeah, no, factions. Fac fra fractions and the same kind of. Here's this alien. There's that alien, and then there's the um, artificial intelligence and all. But that is all aside. Yeah, it's not even. It doesn't it's, have any impact. I think, any it, get, impact on I think it gets mentioned like 
three times over over the course of the whole book. There's what's happening in the background. There's uh, there's going to be a, uh, a what is it? A treaty signing or something. Yeah, they're getting a together. Conclave. Yeah, conclave. Um, a, a summit, whatever it is, and they're get, bringing together. Okay, we've got these aliens here and we've got these into artificial intelligence and we've got the humans and we've got the humans from the radish empire and we're going to bring them all together but it's going to take a long time to bring everyone together oh it could take months it could take years for us to get together and i'm like why just send like isn't it it seems to be quite easy to get around in this universe go through the wormholes whatever but um that's but yeah the press the pressure is it the presca the presca and the r- 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 and the r- 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 and, uh, and and the gek the gek and and the interesting ones that we thought and the from om, om, omkin, om yeah. omkin, no no the omkin, omkin were just under the human faction they're not they're not they're not uh, they're, yeah, again it's sort of like the humans have their own factions and their own planets and their own races and their own languages and customs oh okay the the aliens just uh, are like mono monoculture yes. you know so they have one representative from each um, alien race, but sure. humans. Ah, oh, well, we've got the uh, these over here and that over there, and the Rads have got the artificial intelligence ships and stuff. Anyway, all completely in the background. Very little stuff comes from this book. That is true. So we follow the story in the head of um, Ingray. Ingray Oxhold. Ingray Oxhold, who is one of it's. It's the kind of character who is one of my least favorite sci- military science fiction characters, which is the entitled son or daughter of a powerful political figure, and they have to make their way in the world and prove that they're the equal of their parents, or they have to make their way in the world and stuff like that. But there is no making. It, and it's it's like it, this is more frustrating than Miles Volkozigan, who yes. is the son of the prime minister of a solar system. Yeah. And then goes out in the sort of like, oh, I'm going to make my way in the world. I'm going to have adventures and it's going to be all down to my plucky skills and stuff. And he does have like a plucky attitude and skills and things like that. But his father's the prime minister of a galaxy. Well, not galaxy, of a solar system or yeah. like, a, a, you know, a, 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 a space empire. Like he gets given a ship. He's just, a, he just goes into officer training. He doesn't make, he doesn't, it's one of those things where you just go, oh, I, I kind of understand why in the fantasy novels they always get someone who's a farmhand and he has to work his way from being a farmhand up to a sorcerer and then a king and then takes over. Like, that is the... It's so annoying to hear people, like, to read the story of people who are, like, one step away from literally becoming, like, inheriting the name and the position of someone who is at the height of power in a solar system. And that is what this book is about. Yes. It's not real. I mean, of course, it does have science fiction-y elements, and it is in space, and it has aliens, and all this kind of stuff. But basically, the story is about uh, uh, a child being adopted into a wealthy family and having to prove his stand against the others. Yeah. That's it. it. There's the the sister and brother, and it's like, oh, who's going to be named as the inheritor of the position and power of the mother? And the mother has set them up in opposition for each other. Yes, it's like a battle between them. You two have to fight it out between yourselves and the one who's most wor- most worthy will take it and what's it what's the guy's name that the, the danak. Bro- danak is sort of like oh there's no way i can get back to danak but this is my last roll of the dice i'm gonna this is the last project that i'm gonna do i'm gonna put in place and i'm gonna spring this guy out of jail and he's gonna come home and it's gonna i'm gonna get one over on danak and i was like i know how this is going to work at the end um what's gonna happen is she's not going to expect it She's going to get it, and then she's going to turn it down because that's the story. That's the story path. Are we and already in spoilers? No, that's right? not the spoil. This is not a spoilers because this is what happens in these books. I know this is what happens. So she and can get. It's such a goody two shoes guy. Like the. It's such a like. It's it's the way to get sympathy for someone to set them up to give them the prize so they win the prize, but then not have them like ah ha I win against my brother and I'm not cold and calculating and it all won and things like that. Okay. Let me, let me, can I just interrupt here? Yeah, because okay. I want to kind of get my points in before, yeah. before you can all tell all the, all the points before I have any yeah. say it. Go for it. So you... there are three points in this book yeah. that get repeated over and over and over again. It's like it's bashing into your face. Like yeah. uh, she thinks, oh, the reader needs to really understand. They really need to get it. And one of those things was the air... air the uh, air. Uh, the to air be the thing. air to the thing. So I now just typed in, in into the Google uh, uh, Kindle edition and in, in yeah. the search, searching for air, yeah. and it comes up 195 no, no, times. No, 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 because it's also coming up with there. You need ah, to... Okay. T- you need to t- no, air, uh, the air well, anyway, is... anyway, it is about... You've got to put a space first. Air. Mm. There you go. So... 
Oh no, all comes up. Uh, anyway, so it's it's yeah. this 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 thing that comes up like constantly. And of course, then every yes. in, individual uh, ha, ha, kind of intelligent reader knows. Okay, this will be the problem. She thinks she isn't good enough. She thinks the brother is good enough. But then she will get it anyway and yeah. turn it down. Yes, the, this is this the is, only this, this is the is, only I, I, story. I know it. Yes. Everyone will know it. This is that. That's why I say yes. it's not a spoiler. You're saying it's a spoiler territory yes. already. It's but, like it's like saying no. At the end of a Marvel movie, there's going to be a big action a big action scene where there's going to be a special effects fight. You know, it's that it, when it's set up this way. Oh no, I couldn't possibly do this. Oh no, I couldn't possibly. And it's just like yeah. sh- shut the fuck up. You're obviously going to win your mother's approval. Yeah, it's obviously going to happen. And then it. At the end, she was sort of like, and then my mother said, and my knees went weak. And I'm like, no, they don't, because you've been expecting yes. this. We've been expecting and, this. And also, that this 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 little, I don't know how you call it, this kind of way of writing. Yeah. But it's like, um, you, we, we get this once with this. So we know, repeating thing, what that means. Yeah. But then, there are at least three other things where that happens. Yes. One is, oh, is this Palad? No, it isn't Palad. Yeah. Oh, no, I know this will be Palad yeah. because she just doesn't think it is yes. Palad. Yeah. So that's one. Then the other one is shoes at the end. At yes. the end. Why are they talking about shoes. the shoes? What? Shoes. What's going on? And I hair don't clips. Know. Hair clips as well. They're always like, oh, and my hair clips. My hair clips wouldn't yes. stay up like that. I and I was know. like, oh, so the hair clips are going to be a major plot yes. point later on. They're going to be important. And, and they, it just gets dropped. Just I gets don't dropped. know what is important about the hair clips. I know, but that was the thing. It was she was constantly talking. Oh, my hair clips won't stay in place. My hair clips won't stay in place. My hair clips won't stay in place. Hair clips, hair clips, hair clips. And then yes. the point there's this there's this action sequence at the end. Like, and then no, they at took, the point you think, oh, now this is, is the gonna point. be it. Now this is, is gonna point. be it. They she someone takes the hair clips away and puts them in a the thing. And I was like, oh, the hair clips are gonna be a kind of robot. Like, you know, it's gonna be the the the, the robot pilot specialist is going to he's actually going Use to bring them, them, them together. Something. They're gonna come together and actually they're tracking chips or something like that and then they're just ignored and at the end yeah the thing with the shoes I made a note of that as well let me actually bring up my notes here because at the end they're like oh and take do these you, shoes they're not my shoes do under- I don't understand why the hair clips are mentioned or why the shoes were mentioned and, and all the time and she keeps saying oh these were not my shoes and they're like take the shoes anywhere and I'm like is this a joke yes, is what I, is I, going I on I didn't get it I thought there would be something that I missed yeah. you know like something very obvious okay it is tick it's like Shaping into shoes. Yeah, like what's gonna be? But it was never, the... never. And revealed? then like, no, take these shoes. And I'm like, there's gonna be. A, the, he, he slipped a gun into the shoes. He slipped his force wield or, into the, or good the shoes. Bell, the, the, or the, the bell. The bell. Yeah, the thing. Nothing. Like, uh, the the bell or the the uh, the, the, paper the, the paper the the fabric paper thing that just disappeared at the end. But the entire end section. I was just like. What was all of that you were setting up the hip? This is like we were talking about in that previous book where, like, the brain in the body, it's sort of like, stop telling us that the brain in the body isn't a real human thing. And then they said, oh, there isn't, that isn't, there isn't a thing there. The thing that you keep, like, it's the foreshadowing, you're, you're like, you're building up a th- tension. Yeah. And that's the uh, thing with yeah. this foreshadowing that they have, where some of it is so heavy handed and then it pays off exactly as you expect it to. Yeah. And there's this other really weirdly heavy handed foreshadowing about hair clips and then at the end with shoes yeah. and then at the end with other and things. And one other thing what? is that keeps mentioning and I have no idea what's, what you asked me yesterday yeah. about it. It's about the murder. And I think I, I thought like, oh, this is clever and this will be this and that yes. and this. Let's uh, just let's go into a bit more detail about that. Then, so there's this main quandary. She brings someone out, and then the, it, it, up until some point, there was this kind of fun break someone out of prison, take them to the home planet. They're going to help you get revenge on your brother, and then some more like very conveniently, like we were saying before. Very, oh, it's very convenient that this happened. How convenient yeah. that they just met up with someone, and how convenient that they were together with someone who has a history with them, and then just conveniently booked a passage on this trip, and then very conveniently got through there. So whatever. Oh, and then when they arrive, there's these things that are being hidden and two people are there to, to help, like to uh, do an archaeological dig on some field somewhere. And then they're like, actually what I did, this person says, when I left, I hid these things in that field. And it's sort of like, wow, that is, the, that is a massive coincidence and it's a lie. But then it's so much of a blatant coincidence 
that it, the lie that they tell in the book isn't con convincing enough that then Danak would actually believe that. I'm like, these are skilled political operatives. These are people who have been training their entire lives to be like s scheming and conniving and doing that kind of stuff. How can they be taken in so easily with uh, with the, the lie? And then, because it's it's too convenient. Like, I don't believe anything that happened in this book because everything the, just conveniently the, the, slotted the, together. The whole lying and yeah. not knowing and telling the truth is it's so obvious. Pathetic. Yeah, it's it like, is, and also you know when when you when there is a story and there is a mystery. Yeah. And it, this story sets up like I don't know, like ten, three or four. Ten, yeah. Ten mysteries, and they all turn out to be lies or not no. important. Yeah. But there was a the thing. Anyway, what I'm saying is that there was this once they get set up and there's in, in the field and then they go there with this archaeological dig and then one of them dies and they're like, oh, it wasn't me and it wasn't you, so it must so have been this guy. It? And, it, and then they said, oh, yeah, it was that guy, but we're going to pin it on this guy. But it was that other guy. And they're like, yeah, yeah. of course it was that other guy. And I'm like, it's not going to be the other, other guy because he yeah. took... We a, were thinking way too clever you know, for we were the, the, the point is, the story that I thought was going to be told, it's, it, this is, again, this is not a spoiler because this doesn't happen. Like, this is just one idea that I was having. Yeah, but then you spoil it. Other no, people no, no. will have the same No, no but it's, it's, it, you can't spoil this kind of stuff because it's, it's such bad storytelling. That's the thing. Like, they set this up. This drone that killed this person is very, very difficult to pilot. And nobody here had the connectors in their brain to be able to pilot it. And even if they did, they wouldn't have had the training to do it. So it's going to be really difficult for us, anyone to have piloted this drone. We find out, like, uh, uh, one chapter later, that there was somebody else there who, via a drone that he was piloting, was in that same situation. And this person, we find out then and later, happens to be a world expert on, on drone piloting, on robot and piloting. And at the end. Like, over, and over and over and over again. And then at the end, like, I'll get onto this bit at the moment, but they talk about this. Oh, what about this? It could have been this. What about this political faction doing this? What about this going on like that? And then they ne and they said, oh, it must have been this person. Well, of course it was that person. And the conclusion is, was like, yeah, it was that person that they said in chapter 12, no, no, in chapter 8 of the 20 chapters or whatever it was, the person that they thought was the murderer was the murderer, and all of the red herrings that they set up around it were nothing. And what I thought was going to be the interesting thing, that actually the drone was there, took over this other drone, killed him, and we're going to actually put it all back onto this hero captain person. And he was working for the other company and the other planet. I, and so but, uh, like, I, it's just, that, I couldn't that understand at the it. End where I, I, personally, I thought at some point it was way too much politics that went so over my head and I didn't care at all. Yeah. And I, there were so many, like... I didn't even understand what fraction what was planning what behind which back and but it didn't and matter. Thing, it didn't matter. It was just too much. It was yeah. too much, and there was never a clear okay. Let's just let's just take the big big wall. Uh, how is it? A knot of wall. Yeah. And just take out all the individual strands, strands and then make them nice and neat. Yeah. That was never done in my in my no, head. This, and, it and, was and a big was political mess. So disappointing. Yeah. And to, like because it was all set up to be it seemed to be very clever. Yes. But then it all no just payoff. faded away. So let me just say a little bit about my reading experience of this book. I read quite a bit of this. I read up to about 70%, 70 percent, seventy whatever, seventy four percent of it by the kind on my Kindle, uh, the ebook. Um, on my last work trip and then I was like I'm gonna stop reading now I'm gonna wait for Juliana to catch up so then I uh, I was going to read it but then I left my iPad at Juliana's parents place the other day so Juliana finished it and I was like okay I'll just finish it off on my phone so I went to about 70% or wherever I thought it was it turns out this is the worst place the utter the the 100% the worst place in the book to have paused for a few days and not read the book for five days or whatever it was yes. and then to come back to it because everything that had happened up to that point was things happening right. again it wasn't the best storytelling but it was setting up everything which was going to then be in the climax and the climax starts at about 70 percent of the way where she goes into this hostage situation and you think ah oh, right it's all gonna go down all the players are gonna come together we're gonna find out what happens but we don't do that. Instead, we have literally 10% of the book is, is Ingray, the character, 
talking through and thinking through everything that she's learned so yeah. far in the book with two other characters and one other, you know, three other characters, whatever it is. Yeah. So sort of like just talking through the politics, talking through the motives going, well, what about this one? Well, I think this, well, I think this. Well, okay, yeah. it must have been that kind yeah. of thing. Then after talking through all of this, none of it was confirmed. None of it was like acted upon. What was going to happen happened anyway. And in the last 30% of the book, Nothing. Ingray does nothing except at one point throw a glass of water at something. That's it. Everything up until that point, she has been doing stuff and making decisions and making plans. And then 70% of the book through to the end of the book, like up until 95% or wherever it cuts off and goes into acknowledgements or whatever yeah. and extra readings. She doesn't do anything except talk about the motives of people beforehand in such a shallow way. And I'm like, this should have this is already in my head. If this is true, it's in my head. You can't just have two characters talking and thinking about it to confirm it. And then, oh, that is what happened. It's like, yeah, you have to act on this. And it's never acted on. Nothing is acted on. All of the stuff about like the provenance, like the book is named after the provenance of whatever, her provenance, that she's a plucky somebody who was plucked out of obscurity in a in an orphanage or something. And then like she's like where she doesn't, she has to remember where she's come from or whatever like that. But then on the real, like, like, foreground stuff, there's all these um, vestiges which are these, like, memorabilia that comes from the, the past and it's the kind of thing that they can tie their identities to, the vestiges, and there's, what's the provenance of them? Are some of them fake? Are some of them real? Are the ones that are real important? Are the ones that fake are important? All that kind of stuff. And all of that's playing in, and in the end, that pays off to nothing. There's just nothing there at all. Like, once you get down to it, the last 30% of the book is some of the most disappointing storytelling I've ever read. And that's that's saying something in almost 10 years of reading this, that, like, after a, such three good books to set this up, like, this is set in the same world by the same author. The first half of the book was kind of, you know, like I say, a yeah, bit twee, a bit twee. And she was, she was doing she something. She was doing something and things were happening and it was going somewhere. And then the last 30, 40% of this, 30% of this book, all action stopped and it became literally nothing was happening except them talking about stuff and all the stuff that was set off wasn't paid off. Anyway, it was, it was so disappointing, this end of the book, which is why I gave it a one star on Goodreads because I, I, I'm impressed by how bad this book can be. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like, it's, it's amazing that somebody can write a good book like Ancillary Justice and that whole series and then write this and release this. How did she, how did Anne Leckie think this was good enough? How does anyone think this is good enough to be a follow-up book to a massively award-winning series? It makes me angry that this is what's happening in the publishing world today, that someone could read this book and go, yeah, that's good enough, because it is good enough for her to just put out this book, because she's got all this goodwill behind it. Like, nobody could write this and get it out as a first novel unless, well... In, to, in like I say, in today's publishing world, you can because you can get a good following on your blog or on your podcast or whatever like that, and you can get together a, a big enough following of people who like you as a as a as a writer, not so much as a novelist or as a writer. But Anne Lecky didn't do that. She did the hard work of writing a really good novel and a really good series. And like, how? Why? Like. It, it, it makes me angry that someone can write something this bad, put it out, and someone go, "Oh yeah, there's no problems with that." Like, how could the editor read that and go? Okay, hair clips. Tell me why you're writing so much about hair clips. Like, is there any defense about how many times hair clips are, 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 are put into this book? It's 17 times. You looked 17 mentions of hair clips and it comes to nothing. And that's what I was saying before about the the background stuff in Ancillary Justice. Like the whole idea of like, oh, you have to wear gloves, don't let anyone see the hands. It's like, it's like uh, colour in the background. You know, the different customs that the people have is colour in the background. And this is a book about so all of those customs have come to the foreground. You understand, like this Are you book. Sure you're not mi mixing this up with the um, with the with the fox with the fox fox. Nine fox gambit. Yeah, with no the gloves. No, no, they even also in, have gloves. It's, it's, it's both oh, okay. of these. Uh, uh, <laughs> characters having to wear gloves in uh, uh, one of the social things is having to wear gloves and having your hands covered up is kind of a common trope in okay. science fiction and fantasy. Oh, okay. I think it's in. I think it says in this book. Uh, oh, her uh, hands were uncovered. No, it's not in this one. It, in the it's only in the Radish Empire where it is. So in this oh, yeah. book, when the when the uh, I think it's a, 
an ambassador turns up, the Radish Empire ambassador yes. to the Gek is sort of like, oh, and she's wearing gloves or she's not wearing gloves or whatever mm. it is. Like there's a bit of a mention there. Sure. Like, the, but again, all of these things are brought to the foreground. Like what are the vestiges? Oh, it's a weird little custom. What about this custom of these other people where two people have to hang out together, but, or they travel together, but then they're not allowed to talk to each other or look at each other and acknowledge each other. It's like, yeah, but why? Why? What about that? Whereas in the previous books, that was kind of color. That was interesting world building here. It's the story. The story is these things. But then it's not paid off. It, it does feel a little bit like this was actually the first book. <laughs> and then and then she went out from that point to... Uh, oh, what's the Radish Empire <laughs> doing over here? Yeah. You know, it feels like she had this story before she had those other things. It, it seems just like not, not like ready. It seems like yeah. so basic. Uh, you know, like the, all the problems. But it's not only it's basic. Just, I don't no, mind. I don't mind a basic storytelling. Yeah, like, but there's, there's other... no solutions to all the things. That's what I'm saying. She's this isn't up. basic. Basic storytelling is kind of competent. If this was just a space adventure or just a fun political story or like a coming of age story or or I'm gonna get back at my brother story. If it was any of those things, but a basic version of those, I would be like, okay, not for me, but you know, for what it was. Fine. You know, like yeah. I read plenty of fantasy fantasy novels or like science fiction novels, which are like, you know, the young adult stuff, which is like, okay, basic, but fine. Like yeah. not anything, no, not anything new. Like the story I expected, it's like the basic coming of age story. I can't, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but there's plenty of stories, which will be a perfectly good two and a half star book for me because it is just basic storytelling and it's fine. This is incompetent patheticness like the story is pathetic the characters are pathetic there's there is nobody in this book which i can identify with in a in a way which is allowing me to get into the story yeah there are characters that there's cool characters in this book yeah. there's interesting characters in this book but i never I, there were always bits like where i didn't quite understand all the characters there were yeah. always bits to all the characters where yeah. i thought oh this is not this doesn't seem to be quite genuine, you yeah. know? There was always like, oh, is this actually real, what I'm thinking yeah. now? Or is it just a play on me? And it's the main character is so naive, and she's meant to be a political operative who's going to go on and become... And I'm just like, is this a comment on this entire society? That the entire society is so inbred and it's, it's all nepotism. Like, the only way to get a job is to be the daughter or son or... Um, whatever the gender neutral like the whatever the offspring of a thing the adopted child of yeah. someone who goes on is this like a fall of the Roman Empire kind of thing where everything is so decadent and pathetic that yeah. that the only the, the people who can succeed in this place are decadent decadent and pathetic and that, that's what this is about, that everyone is playing them from the outside. But it seems like at the end, it's like, no, they have a triumph that this, this civilization or this society wins through and wins against these other ones. And I'm like, it's so juvenile and pathetic that I can't believe this is even a satire on this kind of thing. Obviously, there's some satirical comments about it, but... Like I didn't the, get that. The, cap the, the spaceship captain, who's mm. the bot pilot, I'm like, wow, this guy's really shady and is doing all of this kind of stuff and is taking advantage of things. And then in the end, it's like, and you're a hero and you're offered a job here. And I'm like, wait, wait, go back. He's playing this whole situation. Like, isn't, yeah. isn't he a, in, a conniving person Everyone as well? Everyone knows what he's, did, what yeah. he's done. And, and then the Gek, they're like, oh, we'll do this and we'll get this person out by playing the rules and rules lawyering this and getting away. Oh, I'll claim to be this person over here and this will get me out of this. And at the end, they're like, oh, let's just fudge all the rules. I'm like, this is the most unsatisfying politi political plotting stuff and spycraft because it's all pathetic. Yes. I don't know. There's, there must be other words that I can use, but it just feels like, well, and yeah. like I say, it was only up until 70% that I realized how pathetic it was going to yes. be. And that is, that, that makes, that makes, when you were sitting on the couch the, yeah. yesterday and yeah. you're saying, oh, I know who, who killed the person. And I yeah. said, just keep reading. I couldn't say anything mm. because it was never a thing. And yeah. this is what happened in this book. Up until 70%. You get quite a, a thing, yeah? There is a story, something is happening, and you think, oh, this is all setting up, yeah. all the politics, it's all great, and then yeah. it is like, flop, you fall in a hole, yeah. a black hole, and you think like, where's everything, where's, where's everything gone? gone? Where's everything that I expected gone? And this is, I think this is what it, this book is. It lets all expectations down. Yes. Every single one yes. of them. There's not, there not even one where I thought, oh yes, so... 
yes, it turned out the way I thought. Well, it did turn out the way I thought, but it was like put on my head yeah. over and over Punched and over. Punched into your again. face, yeah. So there are two things I want to talk about. Oh, no, can I just say just one more one analogy? More thing. One more Once All you right. get to the thing. Just as an analogy, this book felt like playing a, a kind of a fun, satisfying board game. Like you learn a new board game for the first time and there's all these different yeah. cards and you're going through and you're picking up, oh, what's this one? Oh, on this turn, you can do this and this and this. And it's like, oh, I wonder what that person's got over there. And I wonder what person that's got. Oh, what cards have they got? And you've got this whole board set out and all the pieces are set up yeah. and it's coming to the end game. And it's like, okay, this is the last turn around the board and it's going to take 30% of the board game, but this is the last turn. Everyone's going to go around and show their hands. And everyone goes around and shows their hands and everyone's got blank cards. <laughs> and yeah. and then at the end, the last person shows their card and it's just like, I win. And it's like, wait, how can you have a card which just says, I win? It's like, like oh yeah, one of the cards is just, I win and everyone else had blank cards. And you're like, wait, that can't be how the board game ends. You can't just have a card and turn it over at the end. It's sort of like, it doesn't matter what happened, I just win. And you're like... Oh, and that's what it felt like. It's yeah. sort of like up until that point, it's like, oh, I wonder what's going on there. And I wonder, oh, I wonder what the truth of that situation is. Yeah. And everyone turns the cards over. They're all blank except one. I win. Well, who won then? It doesn't matter. But that's how one's, I'm saying that's how <laughs> unsatisfying see, the it is. The thing is, I don't see anyone winning. In no. This. But, it's like everyone turns their cards around and all of them are blank. There is not even a single one I win. It's yeah. just like, it just disappeared. And, and then the person and then the, and the person who wins is sort of like, oh, my mother's really important. I'll win. And everyone's like, okay, you win. And then she's like, oh no, my brother can win. And everyone's like, I, I oh, don't okay. want to win. I don't want to win. I'm such a humble person. I, know, I don't want to win. I know. It's just that, I know. it's just, I don't it's, know, that situation that she gets into at the end, the hostage situation, it's, it's like the... I was talking about the, um, you know, the latest James Bond movie, Spectre. And at the end of that, he's like, well, what's your plan in this movie? And he goes, well, I'm just, I've, got, I've got this gun. I'm just going to go into this building. And they're like, okay. And then the next situation, like, what's your plan going in here? And he's like, uh, well, I don't have a gun, but I've got, so I've got, I know this person. So I'm just going to go into this building. And everything just works out. He, like, gets in the right place. And then the next situation, what's your plan here? It's like... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start driving this car and something will happen. Okay, and they just and then the end thing he's going into the MI5 building which is gonna be blown up. MI5, MI6, whichever one it is, it's gonna be blown blown up. And you're like, oh okay, this is here we go. This is gonna be good. What's his plan? He's like, well I've got this I've got this gun. I'm just gonna go in. And you're like, oh <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was it. That was your plan. It was like, oh, I'm just going to go in. And the whole movie was just James Bond just going, oh, I'm just going to go in. And you're like, wow, that's so unsatisfying. And that's what this was like. You're going to come up with a plan. You always come up with a plan all the way through the book. She has come up with some plans. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's good. When you... Our plans never, never. No, no, no. Actually, no, it's good because some of them do. Like, oh, I'm going to pretend the bot, you're this bot, but pretend you're this other bot. Okay, that's good. Yeah, but, and a few of the plans through, do but, work out. But then the thing is, throughout the whole thing, there yeah. is the plan. Oh, this bot does this. Yeah, but yeah. then she gets confused. She yes, doesn't even she doesn't, know she anymore. Lives, she, she doesn't. She doesn't even get it right. But at the start, she's like, oh, "I'm going to spring oh. this person out of prison, and it's going to and it's going to get me my thing. It's going to work, and I'm going to become the door. You know, okay, I'm going well, to that, 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 that kind but of work. But all the way through, it's like, oh, just just go in there. You'll come up with a plan. You always do. You just wait ten minutes and you think of a plan. And she has been thinking plans, and they have worked out. And at the end, she goes into the hostage situation, and she's like, "I'm going to think of a plan." And you know what? She never thinks of a plan. Thirty <laughs> percent of the book, all the way there's like you'll think of a plan, and then she ends up thinks of a plan, and the brother's like, "Oh, you're just in the right place at the right time," and she was like, "Yeah, I kind of was," and I was like, "Fuck! Don't do that to me! Don't just have someone in the wrong place at the right place at the right time with no plan and just win! It's it's but, so unsatisfying." But, but but then she got upset because he said this. Yes, and it's like because she, no, I was not there. I I did do that on purpose. She did go in on purpose. She went in without a plan on purpose, and it all just worked out and I was like you can't just go in without a plan not to do anything and what you do do ends up getting someone shot they say don't do that or we'll shoot and then she does it and someone gets shot it's like oh but she survived the person who got shot survived, survived. so it. it's fine and I'm like she's in intensive care that's not a win <laughs> that's not a win for anyone <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. and then what actually happened is all just covered up they're like oh we've got a, an official story which what we'll say happened happened y and you are the hero yeah so we'll just say that you're the hero uh, she's like great I'm the okay. hero <laughs> it's like I'm just like why didn't she and get shot it would have been so much more satisfying if she the book had ended with her getting shot in the head like I wanted her to end up oh, come on. dead or crippled no. from the neck down no. that's, that's the payoff for someone who is that arrogant and that privileged and just walks into situations where like oh my family <sighs> ties will keep me through this it'll be fine I'm just like fuck no, you I don't, I don't think that it was quite that way 
I th- it's like no, I'm just saying end, that's my emotional. No, that's my is, emotional yeah, reaction at the okay, end. You okay. know. Well, my emotional uh, reaction at the end was, why is she so whimsical? Why is she so whiny? Why is she so incompetent at all? Like there was no, no. Okay, let's let's get together and make a plan. And then who were these these two characters from the Homerican, the, the, the commander Omkin. and yeah, and the, Commander and the, Chili and Commander, commander and, the and then how they like, okay, that one person speaks. Barbariat or the the language really language, well, yeah. and I thought, okay, that must be a thing. It yeah. must be a thing. Be- why is that person speaking that language so well? He was an ethnologist. So well? He studied their culture. Yes, but no, nothing. No, it doesn't These mean, people no, just disappear. No. They have no real. There was purpose. just hostage situation. Like, oh, we gotta have some gunfighting or hostage situation, yeah. and then it's like, okay, let's have it. And then what? How does uh, it pay off? No payoff. No payoff. No. But payoff. that's that's kind of the book. So. Let me come to Okay, this. but your two okay. points, your two points. My yeah. two points. So, yeah. um, on Goodreads, I think um, some people wrote, oh, what I liked about this book was the explorations of the gender. Yes. What Can about it? we talk it? about that? So, like... The it, personal it, it pronouns. Took, uh, like, yeah. Well, I, I think it was kind of when I was about um, uh, 20% into the book yeah. or something, we had a conversation via... Uh, messengers because you were on a on a cruise yeah. um about on a work trip yeah what are the best what is the best way to get up especially in english out of this he she it situation right they yeah they well yeah. This Gen- is- we need gender neutral personal pronouns yes we need one that 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 works as a singular and a plural no we have plural they is plural y- yes Okay. Well, if we if we keep they. No, we do keep they. They is they is plural gender neutral. That's what we want. Okay. Okay. So we do have plurals. So we can't use anything that sounds like a plural. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't understand which is. We can't use they and yeah. they. We right? talked about so, this. We talked about this on the on the on the two, we talked episode three fifty. But also, we, you we had a quite an intense an, another of that conversations yeah. where you send me lots of blog posts and we sent list. me a whole list of possible uh, pronouns. From A through to Z, you went through all the consonants and made up no okay or whatever. It Look, was. if we're gonna get into this, I've got to do a little bit more because I did the, I did some research about this, and uh, I think it it fits with this book because okay, let's talk about it now. There was a certain new kind of way for me new to yeah. uh, to do the the gender thing. Let me put one thing first. Yeah, she did something with pronouns. I understand that halfway through the book, it goes like the ambassador of the humans for the geck or something says like um oh yeah and then she or he or or who gives a shit kind of like this yeah yeah right it went like oh yeah it's he or she uh no no that was actually no i i understand that because that's from someone from the radish empire in the radish empire they don't have so she calls she no they don't have a gender neutral personal pronoun they just call everyone she which is what they did in the previous no 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 no, exactly it wasn't that because that person changes gender sometimes yes yeah so it is she or he yeah. That was specifically, yeah. not just she. No, she so, was saying she, he, or whatever, because she didn't know if they were male, female, or whatever. That's the whole problem. That, so I understand what you're saying, but it was a point where she herself didn't know if somebody was he, she. Yeah. She didn't know and the gender n- And it sounded so much it. like a comment on yeah. that whole pronoun thing. Yeah. Um, but then, and like he, in this book, in comparison, like uh, totally opposite to, to the other books where she just went with she, yeah. um, there, in this book, she went with a new uh, or a new to me pronoun concept, which at the beginning, uh, probably like 20% into the book, I didn't even realize was happening because I can tell you it read to me like an accent. It read yes. to me like a dialect. Yeah. Like, you know, in, in this, uh, in, in My Fair Lady, where yeah. they all have right. like, all right, E, yeah. and, and then she has to, to practice the <sighs> yeah. sound, you know? Uh, yeah. Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire. Yes, <laughs> this kind of stuff. And so, what happens is that they left out the H. No, or what, the S H. Yeah, or, or the T H. Yeah, but yeah. In, in a dialect, you would leave out a H and yes. leave but be left with an E. Okay. So instead of he, it's E. Okay. And this is what I thought happened. And then you pointed out, oh, did you? And then I, it was there in yeah. my face the whole time, thinking like, oh, this is really, really not a good way of saying it. Yeah. Okay. So th- th- to get to the bottom of this problem, uh, science fiction writers have come up with, uh, not just science fiction, lots of people have come up with many different solutions to the, is it a he? Is it a she? And if it is not he or she, what is it? Like to get the gender neutral. 
Now, there's, it turns out that in, um, in uh, Swedish, um, there is a, uh, they have this very interesting word called hen, because the uh, masculine, if you say someone about like he or she, masculine is han, and the feminine is hon. So you got han and hon, so what's going to be the gender neutral is hen, because they're like, okay, great, because the, gen the male one starts with a H, ends with an N, N. and has... A, an E in the middle. The other one starts with a H, has an, an N at the end. You just use a different vowel. You just use a different vowel. Okay. And that can work in Swedish because there is an obvious way to work out what to do it. The problem with English is that there is no, there is no one way to change one vowel or one consonant to keep it, to keep it um, consistent across the she entire and she and he she and he you can do something you can just pick out a different um a different start letter no. but then her ends with er and him ends with im so what new first letter are you going to get to like with let's say b because i've just got it here you've got b so he turns and she can turn into b but then if you're going to say her it's going to be burr or if you're going to say him it's going to be bim but then so so you can't just change the first letter so what do you do you've got to change the first letter and change a, a, a vowel and change an ending one so there's no easy way to get to the bottom of this problem in let me, let english let me just tell the, the, the listeners here luke has here a spreadsheet well i wasn't going to get to that with quite. a whole <laughs> like list of, of like he, he ex, actually went through all of them yeah like he, he no no let, through, let me get to this this is so very impressive what there so here there's lots of different ways that people the way you can do so one way is to come up with an entire new set but the problem with that is that people have to learn a new word and learn individually all of the different declensions to go. Yeah. Is it, you know, is it possessive? Is it, um, what, are, what are the other ones? I, I brought something up here. So you've got to have something nominative, the subject, objective. So he, him, possessive determiner, his, possessive pronoun, that is his, you know, so his eyes and something belonging, something of his or something belonging to him. And then the reflective, himself. So you've got himself, herself, itself, themselves, and its and theirs and theirs and, and all that kind of stuff. So you've got these different declensions. And so you need, an, either you have to invent a new beginning to the word and all new declensions, which is actually too much for people to understand. In yeah. English, it's too much to ask. And you can tell it's too much to ask because people have been proposing this for 300 years or 200 years. And I made a list of all the different proposals that I can found from different websites. Yeah. And that you've got, you've got e ero imkim, chi, chis, and chim, uh, him or her, him, his and her, and hit, here is Z Zim Z is himself, Na oh, Nan yeah. Nan self, Sir Sim Sim, G Jim Jima and G and June, which is like and then and French then there are the stuff. ones that then there are the ones that you yeah. can read, yeah, but have no idea how to pronounce. Yes, them. and this is the big thing. So the problem that um, Anne Lecky has fallen down with is that she's you she's got a use which is visually distinctive and doesn't have that many new declensions that you've got to learn, except by missing off the first letter, you're actually removing information to bring it down to an E, an S, is like E and S, and then air, which is like, which is like the, leaving off the, not just the front of the he or she, or his, es, you're actually missing out the the of their. But then, like, why are you using the root, the plural pronoun gender neutral root, to get to the singular possessive of there, you know, it doesn't make sense to just drop the information at the start. At one point, they're saying air, air, and I'm like, you know, who, all, who is the air of the title? It's yeah. sort of like who is air's air, or like the air of air, and I'm like, why am I reading? Like, could, how could you write that sentence? Air, 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 yes. air. I, for this, missing up there. For this book, I would be very, very interested in hearing how the audiobook works. Yes, it can't because all <laughs> he did this. What's it like? So the point, the problem is, is, is missing out information about the like the, the 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 first letter. You can't just miss off the first letter because you're not left with anything. You can't like there is no way to know. Oh, he, he did that. Oh, did he do that? Yeah, because it sounds like a dialect. Yeah, and it's sort of like oh, that's good for him. And it's like, for, are you, for him. For, and it's, is even, that it's even used, people do talk that yes. way, but they're using this to say him or, or them. them. Yes. So it is, it is, an, it is already in use. Sock thing. it to him. It's like, sock it to him, sock it to him. Is it like, so, like, 
let's take the fight to uh, well, it's difficult for me to like yeah. like uh, put this it on this a, voice because it is already in a dialect and it yes. is already used you can't use it for something new but the point is you can't have a word which drops information like yeah. it drops a, a sound and drops information about the word to 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 make something new to make make new meaning you no. can't get a word reduce no. its meaning by removing part of the word to know its root and then inventing other declensions for it and then adding back the meaning for what these words work. It doesn't work. And I would, I think I would feel less strongly about this book if they'd actually done something with it. Yeah. This doesn't, this is not an exploration of gender. This just has some gender neutral people in it, which is then a language exercise. And then it's a failure at the language exercise. Yeah. Um, so what I did this chart that Juliana's talking about is like okay so we're gonna try and keep the declensions the same so if something is B it has to be bur or bim and then hers or burs or his will be biz um, and then bim self and bur self I'm not too worried about that so the problem is is that if you actually use these words they become, they can be different words. So all of these words have like some like uh, problems. Like you can't say B did that because B is already a word, you know, <laughs> and biz, and biz C is a word, P. like a business and stuff like and that. C. Yeah, and C is sort of like C did this. C did that really? You can't, can't really, and Sim Me. and Sirs and, and Sis <laughs> and Sis and Sis and stuff like that. And, and then with a hard C or a K is Key did this. No, Key is a word already. Kim, him becomes Kim, which Kim. is the name. Kim did this. Oh, does this belong to Kim? Oh, oh I don't know. Yeah. It's sort of like, no, yeah. that's already a name. And curse sounds like curse. And there's other ones which you can't really do. Like J doesn't work because like if it's, if someone messes up the declension of, in, in, instead of saying jers, in hers, they go, oh, well, I'm just going to use the, the, the male roots to this and say jizz. It's like, no, you can't say jizz. And there's some other ones as well. If you use the qu, like, like a Q-U or k dolly like qu thing, like you get qu and then quim and you're like, mm. And quiz, you're like, well, quiz, it doesn't matter if you say quiz, like it, it's it's his, it's quiz instead of quiz, but then quim, now you don't want to be saying quim, so there's a few, oh, and piss, is like, oh, it, yeah. it, that is piss, I mean, it's his, I'm trying to say it's his, but gender neutral his. So anyway, I went through all of these, and there's the one which actually comes out the best is the V sound, because there isn't ver, yeah. V, ver, and uh, vers, viz, and, uh, you know, so viz can be like vis a v, but it's not like an English word. But yeah. um, and, and vim is a word, but it's not a very common word. So, but the way that this is being used before actually has a name, doesn't it? On this one, um, uh, oh no, it doesn't that? No, spivak is e and m and air. Yeah, which so is, this is what she used. No, no, but she didn't use a a laughed or e laughed as in e y. It's yeah, just e as e. a certain so, yes. But yes, this invented pronouns. This comes from 1917. Is used in a few science fiction books. Um, including Alistair Reynolds, and he uses V and Ver and Viz. And not only does it, you, you can't, it doesn't get confused with other names because there is no Ver and V and Viz. Uh, I think that and that was the one that I yes. actually think yes. is it came to, best. But most importantly, you can't have Z or Z and stuff like that because there's too many words which belong to, uh, which precede his or hers which also end with an S or an S sound. Like, it's too many. And I went through and worked out that the only thing that V has, like, is of. So if you say it's, um, it's, uh, it's one of his, you know, one of his mm. or one of viz, you know, like it's so to get that general uh, gender neutral one that's the one thing and it, it is used a bit but i think it's it's different enough from an of of like with a with a f sound of, of it's one of viz one so, is uh, the one is more like it's it's a, a, an f sound and a b an sound f, yeah a dry sound and the other one has a bit more of a, mm. a, a noise in it yeah mm. a v, a v like yeah. that so there is a slight difference there but there's very few words which end with v which go into it and i found myself reading this book with this in mind because of course this is what the, we had this conversation about, and um, and I was trying this out at actually all the times that this came up in these conversations and in the book that there would be a word which would be followed by I, uh, um, s no e, m m in this book so yeah, like m. some m and e and air and every time I was getting there I was like this doesn't work in spoken language this would be an awful audiobook to listen to because it, there isn't there would be it would be so difficult every time you'd get to that word you'd have to kind of like almost pause, pause. before yeah. e did this 
oh, what is he doing today? Like, what is he doing today? Is like if it was a S S sound or a Z sound, and yeah. I saw these Zs as well proposed lots of anywhere. Z and then an X. Sometimes there's an X E, but well, pronounce Z. Like pronounce Z. That's the problem. Okay. Like that. Well. So there's all of these different issues going in here. And I said in episode 350, where we were talking about, you know, we mentioned this issue before, I said, it's not up to me to decide what should be used here. But I think I'm making a stand. Not E, not as in this book. Yeah. Like, you don't get to decide general gender pronouns because you haven't done the research. Literally, I did research here. I made a, 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 a whole... A spreadsheet of putting different starting names on top of the common declensions, like the the personal pronoun declensions, and V comes out ahead. There are, a, but and also you could do some like longer ones, so like an SH, but then it goes she and TH. Well, then you're into there and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And I tried them out, but I like V because it, it all of them are the same length. You yeah. know, so you you you'll know using V because V is just V E, which is the same as he and we. You know that kind of yes. thing. Like, um, not she, but it's a bit longer. Um, and then uh, ver is three letters long, but you know it can't be vers because then that's four letters long. So it's actually viz. Okay, so you get the female declension and the male declension if it's. Um, so you don't, you don't say, you don't say ver, you say, uh, no, you don't say, um, vim, you say ver, and you don't say vers, you say viz, because then you get the, the right n le number of letters. It's always yeah. three letters. Okay. And that wouldn't work with a lot of other beginnings and ends as well like that. So yeah. I think that other languages, like, I think English is particularly difficult to it come is, up with one. Like, say Swedish, and they just go, like oh, Swedish, we'll just use an yeah. E instead of an and, A and an O. And, and in Turkish... You don't even have this whole thing. Yes, it's you great. You just say one, it's just one way of saying it. And then yeah. just by, it, it, people don't, I don't know how they do it. I need yeah. to ask a, a Turkish person how yeah. you would then, but, but they don't care maybe. They don't want, no, that's the point. They, it's so not important. an issue. It's not an issue. And this is so much easier. But so, I found myself after reading this book and thinking about this, wanting to use V and Ver just in conversation and Viz, Ver, V and Viz, just in conversation between ourselves. Yes. Because it but, makes more sense. Like when I want to say, I don't want to say he or she. Like in writing, I don't mind he slash, slash she he, or yeah. S slash he, so it's yeah. sort of like s or he, like that. In, I don't mind that kind of thing in writing, but in writing it has to flow. He or she did this is fine in writing, or if I'm just going to say it out loud, like. But you don't want to go. He or she did this, and then talk to him or her, and then yes. did that with yes. his or her thing. You exactly. just want to say V did this. You know, in German, it, yeah, it gets it gets this. actually more crazy. Yeah. And um, there is like the, the thing that you, that people come up with, you know, we have uh, certain certain words like a lehrer, yeah. a teacher. And, and and the female version is lehrerin. Yeah, but if, if it we, belongs to her. <laughs> but if, if it is multiple, then it's lehrerinnen. So because... And if it if belongs you, to multiple ones of them. No, because if you want to include male and female, you have to put lehrer... Yes. Star in an yeah, and then this is oh, not. Oh, that's always the funny when when you get a letter and they don't know who they're addressing. So Lehrerinnen und Lehrer. Yes, it's so they're, they're addressing everyone, so they have to yes. put it in there. No, but again, if it's to one specific person, yeah. so it's like personal. I think there is a problem with English, and I don't think science fiction writers are going to solve it just by coming up with their own ideas nah. and throwing think... it together in this. Because unfortunately, this is not an exploration of gender. It's an exp it's an experiment with oh, person language. It's, it's a language experiment, which yeah. is a failure. Unlike ancillary justice, which was an experiment with gender, because you were removing gender. Here, you just have some gender neutral characters, yeah. and I'm like, but that's been done before. And in this way, it just got in the way of the story. Also, the thing is, you know, in the, other, just in the other books, block. there was often quite clear. Okay, we are now in the in the she section where everyone is she, yeah. and then also we have a section where it's he and she. Yeah. So, and here we had he and she, e. And yeah. everything mixed together. I never was sure Why? what is going on right now. No, I, Who I is what? Why is... I always understood no, it. I like never. The, the nuncle was, was... The nuncle was a V. Oh, sorry, an E. I never understood. Like, sometimes... And the mother was she. And then that person from that was E. Yeah, and not... It was just and, when you no, were... I, the thing is, I that's why it, it wasn't an exploration of anything. It was way Because too... as you were introduced to people, some people were introduced as he... And from then on, they were he. Some people were introduced as she. And then from then on, they were she. And some people were introduced as E. 
And then from then on, they were E or but V. But sometimes like it, they it, were it, talking about people. Yes, but and it never it was changed. So it was. It might, have been, it might have been confusing, but it was not an exploration of anything. No. Nobody was like, oh, from now on, I'm not going to be he or she. I want you to call me E because I don't want to be known as that. That was never. Nobody was like, oh, up until now, I've been E, but can you call me she or he from now on? There was nothing. There was no, no exploration of, of is there a biological root to this? Are some people in this culture just born without like with two genitals or one gen like there was no exploration of any of this it was sort of like oh these people just have personal pronouns like this and other people have personal pronouns like this and other people have pronouns like this if at the end of it she had been like oh and she'd been called she all the way through and then she was like oh and then i got an erection i'd be like oh right so all this time you've been a you have been physically genetically a male but you've just been calling yourself she and it's been your choice to be a she this entire time yeah. i'd be like oh that's interesting a bit like nine fox gambit where she was like oh and then she had an erection because at one point yeah. in that book she was like oh yeah, uh, yeah i do i am a she and i having did, having an did erection you know there was no sex in this book no sex it was it was like i say it was so twee like it was uh, i read this fun tweet it's sort of like if you ever wondered how long people can spend together and um and uh, get so close but then never touch or never do anything just young read adult. read young adult fiction it read like young adult fiction but then there was like oh and there's this thing and they sat together on the bed and people come in and smirked and were like oh are you interrupting anything i was just like why haven't you finger banged yet like what what is what is going on but there like, was never any 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 emotional thing no. between anyone there was like oh the captain and this guy were great and it was sort of like oh did you do anything on that really really long boring nope. three-week transport trip no. where you're in close quarters and you just had nothing to do except out. fuck and it's like oh no we never did anything i'm like fuck, just fuck like just fuck it's fine it's no, okay no, to fuck that wasn't the, that was not in in the book at all but that's the thing like in the end gender didn't come into it no like it was not an exploration and that's again it was another disappointing thing it's sort of like you had a pronoun an exploration of pronouns and stuff but the, nothing else like nothing else it was quite Quite anyway, annoying. we've ranted enough. Let, We're let almost me, now. Let me read one one sentence, and I uh, think okay. that sentence is quite telling okay. about the book. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. His daughter is Tick Yuzin's mother. She's not a clutch mate of mine, but she is like a clutch mate to my clutch mate. Do you understand? Even though she's not my clutch mate, even though she has her own clutch, a different one, I still feel that my clutch mate is a human, and I cannot help but love his daughter because he does. Yes. I must admit, this is a confusing passage because it is a, a, an, a, an alien who lives under the water, who lays eggs and stuff like that. It is a little bit tricky, but you, when you're reading that, you're like, what am I getting out of this? I do understand. Exactly. And it keeps repeating words and yeah. words and, and words. And I, I don't get like, a, it doesn't transport anything. Yes. I think what they're trying to do is like, oh, and to make these people sound foreign, we're going to make them speak weirdly. The problem was that, like, oh, yeah, at one point she's got this translation machine. She's yeah. like, oh, yeah, and he keeps... And it's like, it doesn't add anything to it. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to make this... this Their plans, like, that when they're talking among themselves, it's just going to be hard for us to understand. Like, there was, there was no reason for it. And this whole thing, oh, it's an alien, so they must speak weirdly. The problem is the humans in this book speak like aliens to me. Yeah. You understand? Like, if the people that the humans that were meant to be identifying with and living with and doing this kind of stuff, if I just don't... Uh, if, like, those people read like aliens to me because of their weird language and just bad writing, how am I meant to find the aliens interesting if the humans aren't even human enough to identify with? Anyway, we've gone on long enough. Yes. We have. Sorry about the rant. And like I say, mm -hmm. I come down with the position that if you're going to use gender pronouns, either use V, ver, and viz, or... Come up with something which is as, as elegant as that, but n not as confusing. But you've got yeah. to do the work yeah. and you've got to use it for something. Or, like Alistair Reynolds does, just have a gender neutral character. And it's like, oh, yeah, ver, viz, yeah. ver, you know, v, also, ver, and viz. It's, we... like, it's fine. And it's just like, it's just another character, but we don't, we don't know if they're male or female or if other. Like, I it think, doesn't matter. I think if we want to actually make a difference, we would just have to start using those words in, in all day language. Well, look, and that's I, the thing. I kind of feel like I do. Yes. Like when I want to talk about someone who, exactly. and I don't know, well, this is the problem. In, in this in last point of this, do we need two different gender neutral personal pronouns? One for people that we don't know the gender yet, but they're going to have a gender or for people who don't want like is does someone call themselves V 
or ver and viz, like, do they call themselves that and then we use it? Or is there a pronoun where for unsure yet? Like, yeah. we don't know the gender yet. And the gender could turn out to be V, well, or it could be he or she. So yeah. there is a, there is but, an issue there. You know, in, in Germany, there was just a high court decision that yeah. there will be a third gender introduced. Yeah. Because... Um, it's well, not, no, it's, it's not a third gender. It's a, a third option for birth certificates. Yes. Yes. So, um, but then you would have to come up with, with just words, with, with, with like, a, a, like a person that doesn't have a gender. What is he doing? <laughs> well, you can't so, say that. No, exactly. So, um, but that is quite interesting. And I think we should implement yes, it in our okay. language. Okay, from now on, let's use V, ver and viz. Yeah? V, ver, viz. Not vim. And not verse. V, ver, vis. Yes. Whoa. Okay, that's like... And verse self. Okay, I will try. You don't... I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying, for me, that after all my research and my thinking, as no, I was I, reading I this book, use... I was I was translating it into yes. my head, yeah. into V and ver and vis, just to get and through it. And I think it. these are the best words, but it's just a learning process that I have to remember because yeah. language is so implemented, especially like these little words. Yes, of course. It's just know? so ingrained. But yeah. I, I, I don't think it'll catch on because people have been trying this. But if anything does catch on, it's not going to be ear, uh, M, air, 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 and E. Because yeah. it, it, you're just reducing... It's you, a dialect. You're, you're reducing the utility of the words. You're reducing... You're making the words harder to understand yeah. to introduce new and uh, unusual meaning. And that's never going to work. Yeah. So you, people out there, you see, we did uh, we did got inspired by the book, but not like yes. In so uh, we had a good rant about yeah. it. Maybe I'll post a, a picture on Twitter about my uh, about this the spreadsheet. Yeah. how it doesn't work. Yeah, do oh, that. and I left out e a e i o and u because you can't like again. You, it's there needs to be a hard sound or recognizable root to the word to attach the declensions to. To get the possessives and the whatevers, the I can't even remember that what yeah. they, they were here. Anyway, there's lots of research that you did, and I've got lots of pronoun. blogs about this, and uh, it's quite interesting to to look into it actually, like to really look into it. Yes, but it's it, pretty good. It there was this one list where it goes from um, what does it say from 1792 all the way up until 2015? No, 1992. It says after this point. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, it's just a partial. There's, there's, they're not going past 1992. Since the internet, there's been so many more explorations of this. Obviously, obviously. Anyway, I'll link to some of these yeah. on Twitter. Right, that's it. So, Email me, Luke at Juggler.net. I do reply to every email. Um, and go to Goodreads. Tell us your yeah your opinion about this book. But check this out. Three point yes. nine two yes, rating. I, I don't. I don't get it. How I can mean, anyone read until, this book? Up until seventy percent, I thought this was a quite an uh, like. And like there were things happening, let me put it this way. And it was there were possibly out possible outcomes that I would have loved to it see. It could have, it could have, and like he could have pulled it off. And I think actually she did pull off that first series because the first book I was I thought was good. The second book I was like, eh, it's a bit a bit weird going down and drinking tea. It's taking it in a bit of a different direction. But yeah. the third book, she pulled it out at the end with the third book. And this one yeah. didn't just, didn't get to the end. It's all tangled. And it's so redundant, like everything gets repeated again. Hair clips, again, shoes. Again. Hair clips, shoes, hair clips, shoes, hair clips, murder, hair murder, clips, murder. hair clips. This, who did the murder? Oh. Who did the murder? Who did the murder? Hair clips. Air. Who did the murder? Air. Who's becoming the air? Who's becoming? Am I going to take oh. a hair clips? What about this thing? You said it was like seventeen <laughs> mentions of hair clips through the yes. book. Seventeen hair clip mentions. Yeah. And at the end, a whole load of the action was like, oh, and then I dropped okay. my hair clips we, on the floor. And go, they picked up the hair clips and put it in this secret before. compartment. I was like, hair clips in the secret compartment of the robot. be useful. <laughs> no, they just disappear. All right. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, Luke Burge. Become my friends on Goodreads. Actually, that's what I was going to do here. Lindsay rated it four stars. Tudor, four stars. Veer rated it. <laughs> Veer yeah. rated it three stars. Christopher Murphy, four stars. What are all these four star ratings, guys? Guys and girls. Gender neutral guys. Kate. Um, right, yes, uh, become my friends. Suggest books for us to read on the books you would like to see reviewed on the SFBRP Goodreads group. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Luke Burge, and Instagram, Luke Burge, and YouTube, Luke Burge. Juliana is on those places too, as Juliana Kunstendorf or J U K U Berlin. You'll understand it all. Yeah. Right, uh, thanks a lot for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.